Hi, folks, and welcome to a proper episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. Joel's back. We're going to be talking about something in the news today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just like the last one we did when something was going on in the news. And no, we're not going to talk about the Ukraine. I really don't want to talk about that. I feel like everyone else, the pe more qualified people are talking about that. For real. <laughs> and I'm going to let them cover it. For now, let's let's whinge about something that has nothing of consequence yeah, mixology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does kind of put it in perspective, doesn't it? We're like a couple of weeks ago, like, oh god, what a terrible thing that is, is happening. The worst thing that's happening. Yeah, oh. flash forward two weeks there, it's like, ah, yeah, okay, land war in Europe. Fair enough. Oh well, you've got me again. Reality world. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we want to thank everybody for being here. Of course, thank you for uh, joining the today's show. Of course, it's sponsored by you. If you're watching the show live, you can use super chats and ask a question or comment, contribute to the conversation. And you're a member of the show. You're the third member of the episode. Uh, so uh, some folk are kind of unplugged because... Uh, and so I want to give some context. We're going to talk about the history of comicsology. We're going to talk about um, the impact of comicsology on digital comics, the uh, effectiveness and uh, sales of digital comics, and then what happened and what we can imagine from the future. Uh, so... First up, Comixology. If you're not familiar with Comixology, it was the number one digital comic book sales market mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. uh, there had been some other competitors. Uh, I remember I backed the wrong horse back in the day with a group called Comics Fix. Actually, oh, it was, yes. I it was actually that. just uh, just the one that wanted to sponsor us versus the other one. But uh, uh, Comics Fix was a Netflix model where it was like, you right, pay one right. fee, you get a bunch of comics. Uh, but they didn't have the big two, so it was like, it was it was it was, uh, was going to be a rough it was going to be a rough hoe to, uh, road to hoe so to mm. speak. Uh, but yeah, Comicsology uh, actually in 2007, according to the ScreenRant article, uh, which you can find in the description below, um, uh, in 2007, Comicsology was funded to help people get comics. They were basically it was a it was a website that allowed people to identify comics they want from a list, order them online, and then get physical copies from their local comic book store or vendor. Yes, I remember that too. Back when they were like the Red Box, or back when Netflix would send you DVDs. Yeah, yeah, they really did follow the like Netflix model, and then go full tilt. Like just like Netflix would mail you a DVD, uh, Comixology would just help you hook up with physical media, and just like Netflix went full digital, so did Comixology. Um, of course, it pivoted to digital, and then in 2014, Amazon bought Comixology for uh, as a yet undisclosed amount of money. Um, I'm sure it was a lot, because isn't yep. it always? Of course. Uh, but I will say that uh, for a while, from 2014 to now, relatively unscathed, you could link your Comixology to your Amazon account. And uh, I think we can now talk about this. Like, I, I've done some work with Comixology in the past. Uh, they've sponsored shows. We've done uh, episodes in their office. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, they're well, they're, they were located, like, right in uh, New York City. But uh, they they were very interested in linking your comiXology account with your amazon account mm. from the get-go like from 2014 up until now uh, i remember there being like rumblings that they were going to eliminate the comiXology login that it was only going to be integrated through amazon so like we saw this coming the the full integration of comiXology into amazon that was that writing has been on the wall for at least five years because that's what it's all about you know in the tech world it's all about integration it's all about getting as many eyes on one thing as humanly possible and amazon already does it with their prime and with their music and with their like photo album and everything <laughs> exactly exactly ironically i uh, Comixology being a one-stop shop, uh, they've integrated it into Amazon so it can continue to be one-stop shopping. Um, some critics of Amazon and the, the practices thereof suggest that um, this has been the modus operandi, certainly for Jeff Bezos, but uh, for Amazon as a company for years where they uh, acquire a smaller company that does something, some aspect of the book market, mm -hmm. and then basically acquires it and integrate them for parts yeah exactly and strip mining for parts like the uh i know that in the book market you know uh this is a very loose way to describe book sales because i am not a book expert Likewise. but uh, having been explained to it uh by uh, by an expert to me uh you know publishers will make their books available to retail outlets and they have a suggested price for the book 
in order to make money, in order to make a uh, return, and in order to pay the people involved in making the book. Uh, the manufacturer, the publisher has a recommended price that you can pay for right. this book. Um, unless it's Amazon, in which case they have a basically a blank check. They go, you can do pr price whatever you want. And in fact, most books, in fact, I, I'm, I'm sure it's all books, but like, I don't want to say that, but like most books sold on Amazon are sold at a loss. Amazon sells them for a drastically reduced rate uh, to the point where it is impossible to compete with Amazon uh, in the direct book market. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why they managed to kill pretty much all their competition because they have the GDP of a small nation so they can take that hit if they want. And to what end? Why would anyone operate at a loss? Mainly so that they can be the last bookseller and then change it up and change yeah. their prices to being competitive or even gouging. Uh, that's at least the, the cynical way to look at it. I... I do expect them to do that, though, because I don't consider companies to be human beings and companies exist solely to make money. And it, and, and it, the best way to make money is to gouge your audience. So I, I understand. Uh, I don't uh, condone it. I don't agree with it. And I think regulation is the the, the key. But uh, again, I, uh, you know, we're not here to talk about that. So we're here to talk uh, about how they fucked up our comics. We're, we're here to talk about how they fucked up our comics. And indeed, they did. Uh, one uh, notable uh Critical uh, nerd darling Patton Oswalt took to Twitter immediately on, on February 17th to say, oh, Comics All, what have you done? Uh, holy shit, he says. Uh, switch it back. You can do it. Uh, Comics Allergy had a uh, terrible, you might say, response to the overwhelming backlash uh, from the audience at large. Oh, yes. Uh, the Comics Allergy 4.0 update is rolling out in the coming week. Now, before we do that, actually, we should talk about the. So, Comics Allergy eventually, essentially, they closed or Amazon closed ComicsAllergy.com. Yes, and instead, you have to go you, to them now. Yeah, when you go to ComicsAllergy.com, it simply redirects you to Amazon.com, but their Comics Allergy page, yes. where you can buy your comic books. Um, it's Kindle integrated now. I don't have a Kindle. I know my buddy Kurt had a Kindle. He says he tried doing it and it crashed his Kindle. So, you know. Yes. Now, and, and in the tech world, you can expect certain growing pains. Mm. So on that front, I won't necessarily cry foul. But uh, it is full integration. They want you, they don't want you to use an iPad. They want you to use a Kindle. They don't they know they want you to use all Amazon products. Okay. And they they want you to do one stop shopping. Now, uh, after this, of course, we uh, Wednesday rolled around. People bought Which their is comic a big books. Day, yeah, yep, big day for comics. Um, and uh, they made a few. Let's talk about a couple of the improvements they made. Mm, one, yes, let's. Um, one. Comixology went DC only releases their digital books and, and books if any retailers want to participate. Uh, I don't know any that do um, on Tuesdays as opposed to Wednesdays. Yes. And so uh, Comixology would roll out their books on Tuesdays. And so you'd have two big days of comic releases. And it yep. was it, it gets kind of muddy because sure you'd does. go to Wednesday and it wouldn't include Tuesday's releases. So you'd be like, which is bad. You'd be like, wait, did DC put any books? Oh, right. They move to Tuesdays. Um, I also noticed a funny little thing. This is this has nothing to do with Comicsology uh, and their business practices, but uh, this has everything to do with Marvel. Um, I noticed up until the changeover that uh, every DC Tuesday, Comicsology would also release an unprecedented backlog of Marvel comics hmm. from the nineties. Interesting. I did not catch that. Huh. Like two full runs, like two full story arcs of 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 '90s comic books from Marvel, and I I guarantee you that's Marvel being like, oh yeah, and on Tuesdays we're gonna drop um 26 issues of Doctor Strange, <laughs> just because. and ju just to just so that when it's DC Tuesday, you'll see a little bit of Marvel in there. Mm, and maybe more Marvel than DC on those days. Interesting. See, uh, one of the little things that I caught that you may not have caught, uh, me and my other co-host, Matt, who is from Australia, uh, they screwed up the conversion rates in the yeah. prices. Yeah. Which is horrifying if you're yeah, a Canadian. In Australia because uh, Australia, Canada, the, the exchange rates are nuts. Yes, they are. 
and, now, and they... fluctuating all the time too. And Amazon, oh, we we broke the reader, we broke this, we broke that. Oh, but the exchange rate thing works fine though. Don't worry, that's a self-activating algorithm there. That'll be fine. Yeah. And one thing that my wife pointed out was that uh, the day after the integration, um, all new comics were at least a buck cheaper. Interesting. How about that? Yeah. Uh, well, and of course, if you have been a long time uh, user of Comixology, you know that like Comixology comics were the same price as cover price. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason that existed was because of the like retailer backlash of Comixology itself. Yes. Uh, the brick and mortars were like, hey, what the hell? Yeah. Now, um, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we go. But uh, but that was another incentive, I'm sure. And it's going to be a huge change because like I mentioned Amazon's business practices of lowering the prices of their books to put out brick and mortar stores. Yes. You saw immediately that Comixology, now Amazon, or has always been Amazon since 2014, but the Amazon integrated Comixology immediately started gouging, like started lowering their prices uh, to try and incentivize people to purchase more books. It gets um, even a little bit more insidious too, because it's like, hey, can you not read your digital books you bought money for? Well, you know, you can still find all the links to the expensive trades right here. You know, we're we're a mail company, Amazon. We can mail these right out to you in a day if you got Prime. Would you like that? Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. No, no, no I would not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So anyway, getting back to Pat Oswalt, he uh, he got he he was one of many outraged digital uh, people. You know, people on the digital space who were talking about this. Also, um, good spokesman for comics using his considerable fame and reach to be like, hey, this is a thing that affects me and my niche group, and I'm going to megaphone this. Yes, uh, Patton Oswalt, uh, noted comedian, writer, and actor, uh, who is, it, it, it is no secret as a nerd, but he has significantly less clout than, like, let's say, any leading lady or man in the mm. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, for Comixology customers on this journey, according to Comixology sp spokesman, uh, we've been sending email updates, but wanted to consolidate the info. I love that. It's a little quiet being like, we've been telling you about this. So you shouldn't be surprised by it. Uh, Comixology remains the best kind of blah, 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 blah. Uh, basically, we're, we're working on it. And if you use a phone, it'll be way better. Yes, go to mobile, which I have not done yet, because obviously, you know, when I'm making my videos and doing stuff like this, I need it. On my laptop, I need it ready to go, and that's the way I have done it since I started doing this. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's also the other issue, of course, where a lot of people had problems uh, locating their books. or. Uh, oh, yes. A lot of people thought they were completely gone. Yes, they're not. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say your books have not been deleted. Uh, there's also some interesting language that was used. They changed it where if you looked at your books, it was like they changed it from purchased to acquired. You've acquired uh... your book. Uh, so, but uh, but they did release a, an official statement saying it, it it's the same word, like it means the same thing. You do own the book. You will be allowed to download it and cop and, and keep it for yourself. Like, which, you which again, book. people were worried because this ties into a much bigger, you know, running theme throughout this digital age we live in, and that is, do we actually own? any of our media or are we merely leasing it from these cyberpunk mega corporations who can take it away whenever they want it and i think a lot of people were feeling that with this where it's like oh oh i don't own my comics media because they can just update it and totally fuck it and also yeah yeah it's not deleted it's not gone yet hilariously for the first time ever since this integration they give you the option to delete books and me and everyone else under the sun is like why why would I want to delete a book, Amazon? Why? So I can buy it again from you, Amazon? What is wrong with you? Yeah. Why would anyone want to do that? It, it, it's, it's a weird perk they've offered. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was that, that was the big, like, brouhaha that came out. Um, uh, I know that, uh, what was it, Benny the Comic Story had an issue where he thought, like, 26,000 comics were now suddenly gone yeah i mean he has more than just about anyone else so i can only imagine yeah. the sunken cost and the terror that would come with that exactly now he did get a hands-on personal uh assist from comicsology well, to make sure he got his books back not all of us were so lucky um but i should say that you do own your books and those books that you did acquire uh they're still there we just made them hard to find because again the new layout is dog shit 
Yes. Quite simply, it is bad on multiple levels. I can't find anything. I can't barely search for anything. When I actually do read a book, the spacing is off, so it yeah. looks bad. Yeah. Clearly, this was made by people who don't regularly read comics and don't understand. And it's even worse because it's like, but, but, but the other one was good. It was yeah. good. It worked. You, you click the button and then it did the page and the double spreads and everything. Well, now it's just backed up. For at least 10 years, Comixology had worked it down to a science. And yeah, uh, they figured it out. Yeah, they figured it out. And it was it represents the problem I have with the diversification of media anyway, which is, of course, that like the only reason any of this works is because of one-stop shopping. Now, yes. uh, that being said, digital sales are not good. Like, digital comic sales are bad, frankly. Uh, Comixology being the one-stop shop, uh, it, it went a long way towards removing the barrier to entry. But that being said, the conversation has been internally and externally um, over the pandemic, everyone talked about how comic sales were up. Yes. And uh, a lot of retailers, brick and mortar stores were talking about uh, how more people were buying than ever before, more pre-orders, more pre more more pull lists. That's interesting. I assumed it was the other way completely because I know Amazon and Comixology were weird about, you know, the actual like how much comics were selling. And then you had the diamond interference there where it's like, well, one yeah. of you guys is not telling me the truth here. And in fact, I don't think I'll ever know the truth unless I'm in your analytics. So that's very interesting that brick and mortar saw the increase and not digital because I would have bet you dollars to oh, yeah. digital would have seen the uh, growth. Oh, absolutely. Well, given the fact that, like, let's say that uh, the whole of humanity was locked in their houses for a year, uh, yeah. you'd think they'd want digital. Give me something to read, damn it. Convenient. No, they want physical. Uh, Shocking. To digital me. sales weren't just bad; they went down over the pandemic. Really? That is that's so weird. I would yeah. have bet a hundred dollars it was. The I know, way. me too. And I can't. I like this is one of those things where I can say I have to say allegedly. Allegedly, they are. Uh, they went down because I don't. No, because I've never seen the analytics. I can only say that I've spoken with in industry insiders who have confirmed for me this speculation, and I can't re reveal any of those sources. So it really is, like I said, nothing. But uh, let's just huh. say that, like, digital wasn't doing great. That's a hell of an insight because I could, I, I mean, I have been such a huge advocate both on this show too. and my other podcast for digital. I'm like, no, digital is the way of the future. This is the way it's got to go. And the company's kind of half in, half out. It's like, oh, we'll put out a couple exclusive digitals or like, oh, we'll experiment with this, but then we'll stop for a bit. I would have assumed that digital was the future when it first started. I remember when Comicsology first came up. And brick and mortar stores immediately lost their minds and yeah, like formed like meetings and had like online complaint fests about yeah, this yeah, thing, yeah. rallied together, yelled at publishers. Uh, I would have assumed, yeah, uh, based on their reaction, that digital would be like the death of the of the comic shop. And yet, uh, no, uh, not at all. In fact, in fact, uh, people who read comic books prefer digital or prefer physical. And I don't that's, blame them. I understand that. That's so crazy because I assume yeah. like in a post injustice world when it's like, oh, you mean I can get this online every week? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, but apparently uh, and it could be just com competition. It could be um, people who are uh, accustomed to comic books were we were were, uh, were weaned on them via physical media and it's just too hard to make that switch over i don't maybe, know I'm, maybe the idea is too where it's like if i'm buying a digital comp well not me because i'm a friggin whale in this casino i buy more than i really should if, mm -hmm. if i'm buying digital like oh i'll buy the one digital book i want if i go to a store it's like well give me that and that and yes. some D and D dice yeah. and some other shit while I'm here. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Uh, if if you do this for a living, you're spending more than your average uh, comic shop patron. Uh, but I would assume just based on space, convenience, and accessibility, mm. digital would be bigger. But evidently not. That being said, um, I can say that. The move from Comixology.com to Comixology.com redirecting to an Amazon page and being part of the Kindle store mm. gives it access to the Amazon analytics and it gives mm. it access to the Amazon audience. Now you're searching on Amazon for Batman. Let's say it's Batman underwear for your kid or Batman action figures for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, you can also be given 
all of the Batman digital comic books. And of course, how many of them are there? All of them. Yeah. So uh, sales for Comixology Originals and Comixology comic books were up within right. the few days that the integration took place. That No one's listening to the argument of this sucks. This is hard to do. This integration is bad. Like I had, I liked it better before because sales are up. And as we've talked about on the show and in other conversations, um, any company who hears that sales are up is done listening to the conversation. Yeah, stay the course, stay yeah. the course. So it was a good move, like moving Comixology and integrating it directly with comic with, with Amazon. I mean, even on paper makes sense. Like you mean to tell me that I can remove the barrier to entry even further. Like if I want somebody to read a comic book, I either have to put them in their hands or I send them to Comixology. Now Comixology was a convenient one-stop shop for comic books. Yes. But if I can tell them, just go to Amazon, type in any comic book you want. Way easier. And the access, like I, I'm i a reader of novels uh, or, or magazines. I have a Kindle or right. some kind of e-reader. Right. And as a result, I can then integrate that into my uh, into my library. And now it's it's not so different and it's not so like daunting. Uh, so <clears throat> there's more. We'll talk. We'll show you more about like how it looks on desktop in a minute. But before we do, let's talk about some super chats, shall we? Yeah, let's. Stuart McNally, congrats on 100K. We hit 100K over on another channel. Uh, as someone who had a Comixology account for nearly 10 years with over 6,000 comics, it destroyed my digital reading habits entirely. Uh, this is not the only voice that has said this kind of or has expressed the sentiment. Yeah, you're far uh, from alone. You are far from alone, but I am sorry for your for your uh, your situation. Um, because that's where it is, right? Like, your books are still there. You can still enjoy them. But uh, Flywheel Shyster, bit unplugged outside of YouTube, thought I was the only one upset <laughs> at first. The desktop Kindle app has no guided view. That's mm. another big problem, is that one of the big selling points of Comixology, when it first started, I remember they were like, the guided view. Yes, which helped a lot of people who hadn't been reading comics their entire life. Hey, this is where you're supposed to look. This is how the thing is going. And I, I never even knew that was a problem when I talked to people where they're like, yeah, I'd like to get in comics, but I don't know where to look. Like, what do you mean you don't know where to look? <laughs> the, the way you read. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, but it's it, it's a it's a valid concern that is that was aided by the guided view. Uh, Alden Tolbert first made fire than Comicsology. Oh Why? man, made Remember fire! Made fire? <laughs> I do actually. That takes me. I, I know this because literally when Comicsology was bricking itself there, I'm like, what the hell am I going to do for work that I don't know? Hey, is Made Fire still around? Oh no, not for many years. Okay, <laughs> just check it. No, and I remember when they were launching Made Fire, and I'm like, it's never going to work. Mm. Uh, Silvery Cricket, I have a bit of a background with dealing with small companies that are subsidiaries of Megacorps. Bet they got an order from High saying consolidate with Amazon site with like with like two months of warning. That is usually how the corporate world does it. Do it fast, do it cheap, and I don't want to hear any complaints about it. Not only that, man, but I will say they have been, th this, like I said earlier, this has been a long time coming. They've been, like everyone who worked for Comixology was intimately aware of the, of the switch over at least for the last five years. It's just that they made the switch now. Now it could be because maybe sales were so low. They were like, if we don't make the switch over, we're going to kill it. Mm, yeah, or there's like, we need some you know third quarter benchmark that we're not reaching. So, you know, the, the bean counters and the money men have decreed. Well, or as Ethan pointed out on our live show, which is available on this channel now, uh, our big live eight hour live stream. Um, Ethan pointed it out. He was like, well, it could just be that someone looked at their line items and they were like, why are we spending? And they, he made up a number. Let's say it's $700,000 a year, like to pay these people to do this specific function on a company that we own and make less than we're paying to operate. And that is historically all about cutting out the middleman and cutting out everything so that they're the only game in town. Mm. Now I should say, <clears throat> I, that I uh, uh, I have confirmation from an insider who works directly with Comicsology who said that the team remained that the co no one got fired. Interesting. See, I would have assumed that's like new skeleton crew of people who don't read yeah. comics. I would assume that as well, but I was assured by uh, by by a personal friend that that's uh, that fascinating. Um, <clears throat> who knows? 
But uh, then why Brian, is it so bad then? Right then why? Stupid. Well, because it's not their interface. It's like they I had guess. to start over. Uh, Brian Lewis, ninety-seven. Love the show, gentlemen. Wishing you both the best. Oh, too, thank, Brian. You. thank you very much. Um, Matthew Terlaga, I don't live anywhere near a comic shop, so getting my comics online has been an essential for me. With what has happened to Comicsology, my options have been cut in half. Exactly. Yeah, man. If you're a person in a certain place in the world, this is the only way you're going to... I would love to know, you know, when they talk about it, are they just talking about comics in the North American market or, you know, when we contrast compare that to the international market? Because my assumption is like, shit, if they don't get this together in the next two months, this is going to be a dire wound to comics, you know, yeah. just in general, and especially like for books too, that we know always sold better on digital anyway, like your Miss Marvels and your Miles Morales and everything, those titles yeah. that always did better on digital anyway. Absolutely. No, I, I, uh, I, I predicted early on before I had confirmation from insiders about like the genuine effort that is being made to make this integratable and the confirmation from my wife who actually has it on mobile the entire time that it is better on mobile and that oh, they are great. making efforts they're making inroads to make it better and of course with any new technology and any big sw switch over you're going to have hiccups mm. and i understand that any word i use in place of hiccups is going to be met with derision and mm. and and laughter because it sounds like i'm making a molehill out of a mountain but let me tell you like it there's always going to be trouble i should say you've had many years to prepare for this mm. and comicsology has been bugging me for years to combine my amazon and mm. my comicsology mm. account which i refused to do likewise and i knew because i talked to an in, a, a person who worked at comicsology years ago who was like who confirmed with me i was like if i do this can i switch back he's like no <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah like i was right to refuse it but also that like they had been working on this for a while right um joshua vaughn says playing catch up and here's a couple of dollars for the shoveler slash mystery men homage during the most <laughs> recent episode of back issues made my entire day well i'm glad that we could do that man uh my wife tiffany loves mystery men uh, and uh, the shoveler is a great character. Uh, Cam, I can't even read my Comicsology comics on my Amazon tablet. If they were aiming for tighter brand and synergy, they failed horribly. Uh, agreed. No, uh, agreed. Let's let me take a second here. Let me show you something here. Uh, this Please is do. this is the uh, vampires. This is DC Vampires. Uh, this is the most recent issue of DC, DC Vampires number five. This is my experience on Wednesday reading DC Vampires. I'm not going to give away the whole comic book. <laughs> just want to show you what the experience was so C again calm down your lawyers <laughs> this is on this is on desktop so i go here oh okay <sighs> so all right i've got the inside back cover and the next page all right yep. well you know what i read my comics panel to panel let's just do that okay uh it made it smaller and put it in the center of the screen uh let's just switch over oh okay uh there's the next panel Okay. Oh, okay. I think I got it. All right. It's going to show me the panels pretty much as their size centered. Oh, whoa. Now I'm going to, what, what's this? Yeah. Now we got one on one side, one on the other. What the hell? Well, let, let, hang on. Let me, let me see what I'm looking at here. Let me, uh, okay. So that's the full page. Oh, okay. So, all right, let me get back to panels. <laughs> Why didn't we let, just start with the full page? Let, let, let me, let me, let me get back to Oh, and now we can't do now. Okay, all right, we're back to panels. <laughs> all right, so here we go. So we're seeing left page, right page. All right. Well, what, what's this? So I'm doing panel to panel. Oh, I see. Okay, we're breaking down that page by panels. All right, panel one. It's basically one full page, but we're breaking down to panels. Okay, panel one, panel two. What a nice page. Then we go over here. Well, what's that? What? What's that? <laughs> what's Jesus. that on the right page? Jesus Christ. The, oh, this, oh, okay. That was one page you broke down on the right page. Oh, okay. I'm getting a this. little physically ill doing this. This was this was my experience on Wednesday, and it's why I tweeted. I was like, ah! I, the sky is falling. <laughs> no, it doesn't help. Now, this issue has two artists on it. Yeah, but like, which makes it especially jarring. Right, but like that seems to be the new norm for big two comics, where it's like, mm. oh, it, it we can't actually put out one comic book without like six different artists on it. But like, what is happening? This is this is this is freaking a clockwork orange. I got the hooks in my eyes right now. Yeah. Why? This is my experience trying to read it. Now I could just do it page to page. All right, fine, fine. I'll just read it page to page. All right. 
Well, any any page turning experience has been destroyed for me because I will see two pages at once every single time. Yeah, bad for comics, bad for sequential art there. No, I want every page to be a surprise. Ooh, that King Shark page looks amazing. Let me just look at it. I, I really want to look at that. I want to look at it more. How, whoa, no. How do I zoom in? Yeah, used to be I could just zoom into things I like. Yeah. Anyway, that's the example. So you, you see what I'm talking about. Like now, that's it's one bad. example, but like <laughs> it's a big two comic. They had extra time with it. Uh, what what are we? You know, that's the problem, right? Now I understand on mobile, it's much easier. It's a lot less complicated, but like that's where we are. So it's it's so. Not only have you chased any of your digital comic readers from a format they liked to a format that they have to learn to get used to. Yes, which is bad in the tech world. Yeah, which you're guaranteed to lose a percentage of your readers just by doing that. But then... And when you consider that you hold up such a... The only chunk of digital comics, because you're basically the biggest and only game in town, if you want to read the big two week to week. Yes, there's Marvel and like DC DC Unlimited. Unlimited, yeah. But but again, you got you got to pay for two, which you don't want to do, and you're not going to get your new ones right away. So that's out. So Comixology is basically the only place you can go if you want to do it weekly. And now it's bad and cumbersome. Yeah. And yes, those who did stay are now left with this broken ass viewer. That's the one thing you had to get right. And you got it wrong. And you had it. It was called the Guided View. Now, I also know, having knowing those people, Guided View was done by a human being. Yeah. For every comic book. Wow. What a fucking saint. <laughs> right? Like, that's work. And it's work I can imagine that Comixology slash Amazon has absolutely no regard for. Absolutely. So, like, pay a human being. <laughs> and that's a lot of work. And they'd have to be paid. That, I would have to be paid a lot of money to do that. We'll, we'll, pay, <laughs> we'll, we'll pay them to work in our fulfillment center with no bathroom breaks. We're not going to pay them to find view every comic. Well, maybe they can order a catheter on Amazon.com. Uh, there uh, you go. You can Ax- order anything, apparently. That's right. <laughs> Axe says Joel's back. Hell yeah. Back is just reference. Thank you. Hell yes. yeah. Yes. After multiple weeks of comics legends proving that my uh, co hosting gig is the hottest game in town. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, look, I, I tell you what, Donnie Cates, next time you want to do the show, can I ride a Thor, please? <laughs> we'll just trade off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll uh, he'll he'll sign off on that one. Man, this Thor issue was weird. He just, like, ate a sandwich and went to the bank. <laughs> yeah, but people will like it because at least you, you at least he didn't go through any hard times. Yeah, really, he's just chilling. <laughs> yeah. Stuart McNally, worth noting, Big 2, Image, and Boom don't offer non-Amazon ways to buy digital. Only IDW, Dark Horse, Vault, and small publishers have have digital stores. That's right. And that's the real problem. That's when we start getting into, like, monopoly territory. When it's Mm -hmm. like, well, what what am I supposed to do when a giant mega corporation buys it up is the only way that I can do this, and then they fuck it up and make it unusable? Yeah. Sam Anderson, for pissed off casuals readers like me, I suggest Hoopla. It's the same reader that Comixology used to have, including Guide of View, but 25% different for legal reasons. That's awesome. Ooh. For all for the price of a library card, F Amazon. Hoopla, I've heard of, and it is like an alternative to what I'm sure will drive most digital readers to, which is piracy. That's the biggest problem of all on this and why this is arguably a grievous wound to the comic industry. Because if I even just put in right now, read comics online, read digital comics online, it's not going to come up with comicsology. It's not going to come up with any uh, legal ways to it. It's going to come up with any of the dozens of pirate sites out there whose names you probably know. And this is the fucked up part. Their readers are better and their websites are easier to navigate. And that is insanity. Yeah. At least their websites are choked with malware. Eh. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the problem. It's the, it, it's, it's the problem that faced the music industry. And it's a problem that faced the movie industry. And uh, it's a problem that is such a detriment to the comic book industry. But because it's so smaller, no one yeah. will care enough to fight it. Uh, Tie that Guyler 13 uh, (laughs) going to a store maybe as a way to socialize for people. Yeah, I agree. No, the store is a great experience, but it's a wholly different experience. Uh, then if you live in the sticks like me and you're near a shop, it's two towns over. Yeah, and 
and, and if you're like as we have been for the last two years living in a time of deadly pandemic it's like yeah, I, I could take not going out i could take not socializing exactly sean d me personally i don't buy a lot of digital because of all the nonsense video game companies put us consumers through makes me cautious to deal with mm. well you're right to be suspicious because it is an issue uh and it's also only says, gonna be a bigger problem now you know now it's only comic books and video games what's gonna happen in the future of what we don't own oh yeah nerd king 101 i'm disabled so i can't get to the store every week i read i can't read my books <clears throat> that i haven't been haven't read since the update i want a refund amazon can handle it mm. oh they can but I'm they're gonna make to you chase them around for it though uh, damn right uh, Eddie Eckenberg, this has made it pretty much impossible to keep up with monthly comics in Europe. Now, the only real way to support the industry is physical or digital trades. So far, I've found no way to buy singles. It's a fuck of a thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm. I, I and be, I have no, I, I have no solution for you at this point. I will be really interested a couple months from now to hear the big two being like, "Oh, sales are really down across the board now." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder why. What did this? Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Dennis, I think I canceled my subs, but might not have. The process is maddening. And don't get me started on ending DRM free backups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, of course, like obviously that did bring up the uh, the, the piracy problem. Um, so let's talk about Which piracy. We did a whole episodes on that. Too. Yeah, we did do a whole, uh, whole discussion about it. Um, here's the thing. Um, Amazon is to blame for this problem. 100%. Marvel and DC, Image Boom, everybody. And all their wonderful writers who we know and respect. They have to play the digital game because you're not going to be caught outside of the the new of of the trends and the and the inevitability of the future. And as so, we have seen time and time again with Amazon, you have to play with them cuz if you don't they're going to find out how to undercut you and they're going to hurt you that way. Amazon is very famous for murdering entire businesses who refuse to sign up with them. Yeah. And when they do sign up with them, oh, cool. Now we're reading your analytics and now we know how to actually do it cheaper and without you. So, you know, you're damned with us. You're damned without us. So. Yeah. So in, in that regard, um, piracy does not hurt Amazon. No. So, like, I can understand you being so outraged by this interface, by this decision, by their cavalier attitude and their tone-deaf message that, like, I'm going to stick it to them. Because, com because free comic books, free digital comic books are available. Yeah. And there is no stopping them. Uh, you might be predisposed to thinking that, like, you're going to send a message to them by stealing comic books or by reading them for free. And the fact is you don't, and you never were. And uh, the only per people that it does hurt are the people who make comic books, people who produce comic books and the com yeah. companies that, that distribute them. I, I feel um, particularly bad for the people like Danny Lorin, who had a brand new uh, Comixology exclusive book come out the day that this happened. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, the thing is, Comixology exclusive, like, the sales are up. Yeah. Like for those of you who leave or stop using it, there are others who will replace you who are new readers, which is what Amazon wanted to begin with. Mm. So I would, I mean, like I don't have a good solution. My solution would be to make your voice heard to consistently and respectfully complain yeah. and, and demand in a respectful and uh you know and and calm rational manner uh changes that make it so that the way in which you consume comic books at least is consistent if not improved yeah and, and, and there's minor workarounds too there's one here oh i want to actually get the person's yeah. name who figured this out uh tom zacloud uh who figured out if you go to amazon comicsology uh click view your comicsology books and click the backups tab you'll be able to download your comics in cbz pdf format annoying and complex but you can actually then get them in a reader that doesn't suck yes and once you have the reader you'll have it for life yes and again like i said if you use the digital if you use it if you use it on your ipad if you use it on your kindle or your phone it is a much better experience than on desktop 
I do read them on desktop, so it is a real problem. <laughs> it really, likewise, same here. I built my entire thing around it. All right. Uh, Armand Graham, I work a desk job nowadays. I'm only comfortable reading comics on my iPad now instead of my work computer. So inconvenient. I agree. Mm. Yeah. yeah, can you imagine? Like, the problem is, you know, how many of people are stuck at their desks who enjoy their comic books on their desktop, Absolutely. who then have to like, who then have to look like they're doing something else on their iPad? Like, no, 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 it looked like. I mean, this is all. This is a very small group of you, I'm sure, who are pretending to work as opposed to working. Yeah, no, but, I was working. No, yeah, exactly. Uh, oats are delicious. Tablet is readable, but I lack the entire shop outside the U.S. where there is only the regular Kindle shop without new this week or on sale. Mm -hmm. That is a problem, but it's also now part of the amazon algorithm and so as a result uh you can uh it, more people will see the books it's just that your use of seeing them is not it, it's not intuitive and it's not convenient for your 10 year long reinforced shopping practices <laughs> again this giant mega corporation did not consider you when they put this together Hard to which, believe. which seems ass backward we're gonna get in the comic business but we're not gonna you know consider the people who regularly read comics and regularly use comiXology yeah denial this is basically removed my only means to get comics the closest store on my end is down town which is an ordeal to get to between the heavy traffic and the inability to find a parking you, spot. Man. Now, here's Here's a solution for you specifically, and maybe some of you might uh, benefit from it, but I would call that store and I'd be like, can you mail me my books? Yeah. Can we work something out? Like, can we work something out? Like, cause here's the thing. If you have a pull list, they will mail it to you. And, uh, or at least any comic shop worth their salt will mail it to you. But you could be like, yeah, just like at the end of every week or the end of every month, just, just mail me my books and I'll send you a check, you know, or, or you work my, my credit cards on file and, you know, you know what's on your pull list and maybe like you could actually be part of a, uh, a lot of comic shops have like a, like a, like a newsletter mm. or a, uh, like th th that you can get that says like, Hey man, <laughs> here's your, here's your books. Here are the books that are coming out this week. Um, so there's, there are ways to get your books, even if you're not near a comic book store. And I, I would advocate that for anybody who's like my, my, my nearest comic book store is a hundred miles away. Like I know yeah. people in the Midwest who are like, how the hell am I going to get my comic books? And I'm like, Call the nearest one or work out a deal with one of the larger chains like Midtown or um, or Mile High uh, or uh, mycomicshop.com. Like, there's a lot of different online comic shops you can order from that will that are that are great at mailing comic books and you'll be able to get them that way. Yeah, um, it's an option. That's what we're about. It's at least an option. option. Uh, Cam Bo and you guys really had to call us. <laughs> To call out us working from home people. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you think we're doing? What do you think me and Sal are doing right now? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh Nurking 101, Amazon support doesn't even seem to know Comixology even is. That's yeah. I mean, like, yeah, no. They, they probably don't. They probably don't. First of all, uh Amazon support is, you know, they're dealing with a language barrier. Second, like they probably were not brought up to speed. No, they're probably like Comixology. Do we own that? I, and that's actually why I'm like pretty convinced like there are like the comicsology people who used to work for comicsology are now that they're still here because like they'll get they're gonna need people to be able to do tech support or be able to give support and know it intimately yeah you know eventually or they could just ignore you entirely and just be happy with all the money they're making which is the other thing, too, in an era of, uh, again, as we've been saying all episode, what do I actually own versus what do companies say I actually own? Oh, they can just brick the entire thing and then ignore me because, like, oh, we're making money. They don't care. I mean, and that's <clears throat> that's the thing, right? Like, with any significant company like this, that's what their their natural inclination is to do that, is to leave you out or not care. And that's why you need to hold them accountable. That's why yeah. it's your, I, I know it's like, it's like telling you to recycle. It's, it's, it's not fair and it's not really there going to make be a any better way, change. but there isn't exactly Uh young Goku over 9,000. Hey guys, got to catch the rewatch, the rewatch since work is being annoying, but I wanted to say, I'm super excited to hear, Zod to hear Zadarsky is on Batman. Yeah. His red hood Batman mini was very good. And I didn't expect to love his Bruce origin so much. Yeah, that the night was great. Um, I man, I am loving that one so hard. I almost didn't read it because I was just so opposed to another Batman origin story. But man, oh yeah. issue issue one was amazing. Issue two was even better. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe. I mean, like it's Zadarsky. He knows what he's doing. But 
Yeah, uh, I remember people talking about uh, Zdarsky, and they're like, "Man, I can't wait to see him on Batman." And I'm like, "Read Urban Legends." <laughs> yeah, like he's been he's he's been on it. He's been doing Batman, and also too, his new Batman run, uh, judging by the art, seems to actually be a Batman and Robin centric story. So Tim Drake is going to actually get a thing to do. That's nice. That is really cool. We haven't uh, had a Batman and Robin like main run since like what 2015. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's been a while. Yeah. So uh okay, we've talked about the interface, the it's the rollout. Look bad. Yeah, and it it it's a real problem. The question now is what do we do? Like, what do we do about it? What can we do? Like you said, I mean, you know, if you if you are so determined to not use Amazon, we cannot blame you. Like Sal said, call your shop. Like I said, there is a way to around it. Yeah, to jerry rig it to, you know, actually just get the files to read on a reader that isn't shit. Of course, you'd still be supporting the company that's kind of shit, which, again, I can understand how that might stick in your craw a little bit. Yes. And uh, you could also the, the other alternative is you could subscribe to Marvel or DC's subscription model. You will get your books, but later than usual. And you'll be paying for two, which, you know, not great. Yeah, you, you could also. Them. Here's another. Uh, it, it's a, it's it's a, it's a real problem because, like, no matter what, the impetus, the onus on uh, of of change is on you, right? Yes, because, like, you're going, we, we pass you're going to have to change consumer. your 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 practices. Whether you get back into buying physical, and maybe you live in a one bedroom apartment, and so like you're going to have to open an eBay shop and read your books keep them in good condition and then sell them online because you don't have room for them uh or you can subscribe to a service that has the books available two weeks or a month after they've come out mm. or you steal which i like i i'm not advocating pri piracy no, we are I, not I am but it is a very real possibility for most people yeah and when and left with when, no other options yeah and when these companies band together or at the very least allow one company to make sweeping decisions, you know, th then it's on their honor and on their guard to figure out a way to combat piracy. What mm -hmm. is Marvel DC valiant IDW boom images response to these, to this terrible decision? I haven't seen anything now, obviously it could be that like sales are so good, you know, sales were what they were. I can imagine that digital was not digital sales for comic books. Uh, comicsology, like I think, officially went it went full digital, like around 2011, between 20, yeah. 2007 and 2011. Uh, um, within the first two or three years, you knew who was going to buy digital. Mm -hmm. You weren't going to convert a vast majority of the readership. In 10 years. Because a lot of people are stuck in their ways and it takes time for stuff like that to catch on. I mean, heck, streaming movies on Netflix took time to catch on. Yeah. Uh, but like, they knew what the sales were and they knew what they were going to be probably forever based on the first like few years of Comixology's digital existence. And so this change, if it resulted in any percent increase is a win for them from a so it, sheer cold corporate standpoint yeah the only thing that i would really push for at this point because like the problem with the monopoly and the fact that you're, you're dealing with a, a vast minority of entertainment consumers because comics are a niche entertainment market that is overwhelmed by uh competing markets that provide a similar experience that are higher like that, that are higher budgeted and more consumed by more people. Yeah. You know, like you can have the, like part of the reason why comics are and have been great is because like you can see whole strange new worlds on a weekly basis. Well, mm. now people can, you got a whole series about that. You got, you got 16 series about that. Yeah. Um. So it's a, it's, it's a niche and they're not going to listen to you. So what do you do about it, right? The only thing you can do is band together, be respectful, and 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 continuously re request of your 
lords and masters, like that they make the experience as close to the previous experience as possible. I know that's very negative. It feels really yeah. like broken. Um, and again, like piracy only hurts the people who make the comics. Like here's, here's the thing you, you want to like look down the road, right? Stealing the comics and reading them for free only results in lower sales and only results in taking profits away from the people who are paying those people to make those books and books you like getting canceled and people you like not being able to keep making the books you like. And that's the thing is that like the only thing that it will result in is more Batman books (laughs) and fewer books that you're probably stealing. Like you won't be stealing them for long is my point Mm. because they'll be canceled. Um, So it's, it's a real shit show. Uh, because it's not just like, oh, the interface sucks. It is its impact on the comic book industry is, well, on the digital com. That's the thing. Is that for for Marvel and DC and the and 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 the other companies, digital's so low that it really doesn't matter what we do to it. You know, mm. like, oh, you know, we don't even know what the sales numbers are and. As I understand it, most of the Mar- like Marvel and DC don't really even look or incorporate digital sales numbers. Again, that's in- shocking to me. You would assume yeah. they would be right on that. Right. Like, but in they don't consider them when considering cancellation of a book. And maybe that's just the generational divide where it's like clearly these companies are still being run by older people who are themselves stuck in their ways. But I would figure if all the people running the big two were our age, they'd be like, no, digital's the future. Digital where is where it's at. This is, you know, where we continue to live forever. No. I, I genuinely think it's just that sales are so low. They're like, oh, who gives a shit? That's crazy. Uh, Living Free Comixology needs a physical library alternative. As much as I love Amazon Prime, third-party sellers really ruin the comic buying experience, and it would be great to get physical trade paperbacks, hardcovers, and omnis at Comixology prices. I agree with that. There's it, That's very difficult to do, but it would be really... like. I mean, that's that's probably where it's going, right? If you're going on Amazon, you find like DC Dark Ages and uh, it's issue five of six this week. Yep. But like once it's done and it's over, like the book's finished and I look at my DC Dark Ages comicsology book, I should have an option here that's like buy trade, buy Omni, buy singles. Yeah. Now the question is, where am I going to buy those from? Because like right now, and I don't want to give Amazon any ideas, but like right now... Amazon.com does not sell floppies. Yes, which always seemed kind of weird for me. But then again, I'm sure they crunch the numbers and it's like, well, for the price of shipping and the price of packing and everything else, it really doesn't even out for us. But like, God, that would be the thing that as a brick and mortar store, I'd be concerned about is like, oh, so I can like look at the catalog of what's available. I click it and Amazon in a day will mail me a physical copy of that book. I don't have to go anywhere. Seems pretty Come convenient, on. doesn't it? Seems inevitable. Yeah, I, I'm shocked we're not there yet. But again, hey, maybe give it a couple years. I mean, yeah. Uh, Comic Dog, uh, those subservices are awesome. Uh, Marvel, three months behind is barely noticeable. DC, six months behind is harder, but you do get all the books for one price. Mm. See, that's from somebody who does subscribe to it. And listen. It is the thriftier choice, that's for sure. I, 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 I 100% agree with the concept of coming up with like a real... Like coming up with the only change you're going to get is within yourself. And, you know, if you're going to come up with a suggestion, like I, I, I like those, that's not a bad one, you know? So thank you for that. Uh, first, uh, first per Cause I, I had comicsology never needed to do that. Exactly. Yeah. I appreciate the insight too. Trust me. I thought about doing it when this was all horrible and bricked. I'm like, well, is this the only way I'm going to be able to actually make videos for my channel anymore? Am I going to have to eat this? <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, Mika Rappaport uh, says, I know at least the DC service gets its book six months behind. Good for a back catalog, but not worth it if you're trying to keep up to date. See, like, yeah, some folk, if you want to stay up to date, if you want to stay part of the conversation. Like and me and be- Sal do, which we kind of need to. We're kind of hamstrung and handcuffed oh, yeah. by business. <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully, I have a space where I can put those books, but, like, I'm not going to go full physical. Like, yeah. I- I'll probably drop a few. Uh Shane Roark says, any word on browsing by genre or publisher? For those times, you want to browse an entirety of options like Cthulhu Stories or Post-Apocalyptic. Now, I have not gone through it too much. I've just been trying to search them, right? Same. Like, So it, it, it's it's hard to, to 
of having Navigate. a hard enough time just finding what I need. I haven't I, I haven't yet experimented with genre. Yeah, genres just yet. It, it doesn't look like it right now. It looks like if you go to Comicsology, like the Comicsology page on Amazon, it just it's broken down by new releases, deals, unlimited originals, manga, and graphic novels. Uh, then it breaks it up further by being like, here's what's trending, here's what's featured, here's books that you would probably buy, here's what's inspired by a rousing history, uh, more graphic novels that are inspired by like it's it's because the algorithm it's like here's what you would probably buy. You uh, you mentioned manga there too. Does their manga reader reader suck too? I haven't heard that. The manga I don't know. People. I, I don't know, but I assume that they've been they've had it integrated for longer. Then again, is is um, Comicsology the only place for manga? Or do manga people get their stuff elsewhere? I'm assuming they get it elsewhere. I'm I assuming. Have to assume. I'm assuming if it was fucked up, we would have heard about it. This is true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So. Uh, that's where we have to leave it. Unfortunately, I feel like that's the conversation we're going in circles and I don't want to, I don't want to waste any of your time. Uh, but like right now the solution is grin and bear it. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately what I would do, it's always my solution for everything is educate yourself, uh, learn what your options are, what you can live with the most. And maybe your decision is just to stop reading comics. I hope it's not. Likewise. Uh, but, uh, but I, I, I would rather you stop than, than pirate, you know, uh, because you always come back. Um, you know, maybe a trade weight or maybe you, uh, maybe you work out a, a sending, you know, a shipping deal with your local comic book store. Maybe you sign up for one of these digital, uh, distribution services, uh, or maybe you go through a workaround. Maybe you're like, maybe you're more tech savvy and you're like, screw it. I'm going to download, I'm going to get a good, like, what is it? CLZ or whatever. Uh, 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 yeah. CBR, CBZ, CBZ reader. And you're like there, I just download my book. And then, you know what, if you want to know you own your books, you know, you get yourself a nice. That's how you do it. You get yourself a nice SSD, and there's like so high many. volume. You download all your books to there. You buy them through Comicsology. You download them that way, and you read them on your on your computer, and that's your how phone. You know. I mean, honestly, that's I think the best solution. That's is. the one that I'm going to be doing because it also helps for work and everything that I'm doing too. That's and maybe one day Comicsology will get their shit together. Maybe they won't, but at least I know mine will be taken care of and looked at. Exactly. After. Exactly. So. uh, that's where we are. Uh, it, it, it is a real problem. It is a problem. I'm thankful that because of high profile people like Pat Oswalt and, you know, other uh, folk in the, in, in, in this, in the digital space are advocating uh, for uh, it's getting attention and it's got, uh, at yeah. the very least, Amazon's aware that there is a problem and it couldn't hurt to make it a, a, to improve it. And it was the biggest story in the comic book world for like the last two weeks now. And we know writers and artists and everyone else are just as pissed off about it as we are because they work hard on their comics. And if people can't read them or stop reading it, that's bad for them. That's bad for the industry. So here's hoping, you know, if they yell at their bosses loud enough, they'll kick that up the ladder to whatever corporate overlord to go yell at Amazon about it. Exactly, exactly. Um but yeah, so that's where we are. Uh, what I would advise you to do if you have an Amazon account is go to comicsology.com and take a look. Like, Because yeah. there's the thing. You don't have to buy anything. It's already uh, probably in your library. But have a look. Take a look at what you've got and uh, and and decide from your reading experience via whether it's for your, for your phone, your Kindle, your iPad, or your yeah. desktop. And and make an informed judgment for yourself because like that's the only... Like, don't listen to me. <laughs> you know, don't, don't just hear the the noise and then react you know the, the best way to do it is just if you love comics you'll find a way and yeah. uh you know right now the situation is you know they the the book's still there the it, for me it's just the reader sucks yeah it's just getting to it is a massive pain in the ass yeah and it feels like they did it without thinking and suddenly Slap dash yeah yeah so uh there is that element of like insult to injury where it's like come on guys really did you not think this would be a problem did you think that this would just blow over i i genuinely think that when they approach these problems they just look at the bottom line they're like it it makes it is like you know seven hundred thousand dollars worth of a problem i don't care about that yeah like it, it's I, a I drop know. in the bucket to everything else we do mm-hmm it's also a fuck of a thing too, you know, where Amazon is like trying so hard. Like right now, they're really promoting that uh, the boys diabolical. Hey, comic fans, we got a comic thing you love. We fucked up the books you read, but please watch our show. But watch our show. I mean, like that's that's everybody, right? Like that's yeah. that's every uh, multimedia com conglomerate that owns these IPs. They don't look at them as like they don't care. Like 
The Boys? That's a title of my show people like, not a comic book series that I owe for <laughs> having created this bedrock i can build from hey invincible will be sure that when you go and buy the trade will be like based on the uh smash hit amazon show right yeah <laughs> to where i'm like how could you say it's a smash hit episode one just aired amazon yeah but we're pretty sure it's a smash hit because we made it so listen you know. the the closed end-to-end -end numbers that we only have access to they tell us it's a smash mm, hit. They tell us it's a smash hit. can we see those numbers fuck no fuck no and uh fuck you yeah that? just to be certain yeah but uh thanks so much for hanging out with us don't forget to hang out with joel over at youtube.com slash cape joel and subscribe here for more make sure to have your bell uh and notifications on so you know when we're going live and you can show up here when we do these on a weekly basis or join us on mondays for our comic book weekly review show off the rack where myself and tiffany chat uh twitch.tv slash comic pop for more and youtube.com slash comic pop for the big show over there we'll see you guys next time thanks a lot for watching i'm sal i'm joel so long